Number 43, write Lewis structures for A through D. Okay, so we've already done Lewis structures starting at number 39 in this chapter. So if this is your first time here, these uh, Lewis structures are a little bit more challenging than the other ones. So my suggestion is go back to those if you haven't done so already. But if you have, let's get down to it. So A, we need to find out the Lewis structure for PO4, 3 minus. Now, also I want to say is that many teachers and professors teach Lewis structures differently as a, as a way to, you know, everybody has their own special way of how to get to the actual answer of what a Lewis structure is. I have my own way. It's the foolproof Lewis structure method, but it might be different from your teacher or professor. So just know that it might not match with what you're learning in class, but if you do it this way, you will get to the same answer as what your teacher or professor would have gotten if they did it their way, all right? So the first things first is we always have to write a blueprint for the atoms. So between phosphorus and oxygen, which element goes in the center? And that goes by the electronegativity rules. I'm just going to put here that the central atom, Ca, always is the least electronegative. So I'll put En. All right, and it's never hydrogen. So hydrogen is never going to be in the middle, never gonna be the central atom. It goes by electronegativity. So we should know that trend. As you go from left to right across a period, electronegativity would increase. And as you drop down, electronegativity would decrease. So between phosphorus and oxygen, here's phosphorus, here's oxygen, it looks like oxygen would be the more electronegative. Electronegativity increases this way. So that means that phosphorus would be in the middle, surrounded by the four oxygens. Phosphorus with O, 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 and O. Now we need to draw the valence electrons around each atom. So phosphorus, there are five electrons. Oxygen, there is six. So I'll draw five dots around uh, phosphorus and six around oxygen. So I'll say one, two, three, four, five, and then I'll do one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So now we have a charge. This is a negative three, which means that we gained three electrons. So right after you draw your valence electrons, that's when you change your count for positive or negative charges. In this case, we have to gain three electrons. Now, technically it doesn't matter where you put your three additional electrons, but what I do, if I see an oxygen, chances are I'm going to put it on the oxygen, but you just gotta be fair. In this case, I'll add one electron here to make this a pair. I'll add one electron here to make this one a pair and one electron here to make this one a pair. All right, so there's my three. And now I will continue. So I only wanna bond now single bonds between the atoms. So I see one electron here from oxygen, one electron here, that's a bond. This is a new bond, they're sharing. This is a new bond and this is a new bond. So now you check your outer atoms for the octet, that's number four. And remember, octet is eight electrons. There are exceptions. Hydrogen only wants to have a max of two electrons and boron, if it's neutral, wants to have a max of six electrons. So this oxygen has two, four, six, eight. So that's good. So that means I won't touch this bond. I won't turn it into a double bond. You keep this whole thing, all right? This oxygen has two, four, six, eight, so that's good. So I'll put a check here. This oxygen has two, four, six, seven, so eh, almost there. But this oxygen has two, four, six, eight, so that one's good. So the only thing I can really mess with is this guy over here. But look, here's a lone electron here, and here's a lone electron here. If I take this electron and I put it over here, now I can make my multiple bonds. And that's the last step, add multiple bonds if needed. 
So I'm going to add my one bond right here to help out that oxygen. So now this oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons, and now we are good. Now just check the center. This phosphorus has two, four, six, eight, ten electrons. What? I thought we only wanted eight. Well, just know that some elements can actually have more than eight. Some central elements or central atoms can have more, whoop, more than eight electrons if they are located in period three, so period number three and below. So here's your breaking point. This is period two from boron all the way to neon. If your element is below this line, so anything below, your central atom could have more than eight electrons. So phosphorus could have a max of 10 if it's in the center. Sulfur could have a max of 12 in the center. And since this is phosphorus and this is below the second period, we're okay. So this one is good. A is done. The only thing that you just have to add is the brackets. Because there was a charge, you just have to say that there was a charge. You added three electrons. So you got a bracket and bracket and put three minus, and now we are done. Now we can move on to B, which is ICl4 minus. So it's a minus one. That means that we gain one electron. So let's see, between iodine and chlorine, Iodine would be least electronegative, so iodine in the middle, surrounded by four chlorines, so I in the middle, one, two, three, four, and now let's add our electrons. Iodine and chlorine both have seven valence, so I'll draw seven around each one. So let's start with this chlorine. We'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're almost there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then this iodine has seven as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we are going to manipulate for the charge. In this case, we have to gain one electron. Now, this one you have to be specific. Let's just say that I add my one electron here. Now this chlorine will have two, four, six, eight electrons already. So would this chlorine want to bind? No, it already has an octet by itself. So if you add the one electron to any of the chlorines, they're not going to want to bind. So that's why you would have to add it to the middle. And in this case, the only um, one that is not bound or not in a pair is this electron. So I'll just put it over here. And I'll make it black like this so that you guys can see that it was added. Now we're going to bind only single bond and then check your outer elements. So one and one, one and one, one and one, one and one. Check your outer elements. This chlorine will have two, four, six, eight electrons. So that's good. This chlorine has two, four, six, eight. So that's good. Two, four, six, eight for the chlorine on the left. And this chlorine has two, four, six, eight. So we are good. Let's just check the middle. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Is iodine an exception? Can it have a expanded octet? Yes, it can because it's below period two. It's period three and below. In this case, iodine is period four. So we are good. It had a charge. So we just have to bracket it. I don't want to cut off those electrons. So we'll just bracket the whole thing, put a negative one, and we are done. C, SO3, 2 minus. So between sulfur and oxygen, which one is in the center? Sulfur is here, oxygen's here. As you go down, electronegativity decreases. So sulfur would be in the middle, surrounded by three oxygen. And now let's put the valence electrons. Both sulfur and oxygen had six valence electrons, so I'll draw six for each. So we'll say one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry for the messy dots. I'm just trying to go as quickly as I can. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then this sulfur should have six as well. So, and I'll do it in a different color. So we have 
One, two, three, four, five, six will do. Now we have to talk about the charge. It's a negative two, which means that it will gain two electrons. Now, in this case, if I do try to add it to the outer element, it won't have an octet. It will still have seven, two, four, six, seven. So we're okay. So maybe I'll add the one over there and I'll put it in black just to show that this one is different. And maybe I'll add it to this one. You always want to bind it to one that's not in a pair. Now we're ready to make the single bonds. So single to single, that's one, that's two, that's three. And now we check the outer elements. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight. So that guy's okay. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight. That's good. This oxygen, however, has two, four, six, seven. Hmm. But now look here, there's one electron here and a lone electron here. So what do you think is gonna happen? This electron's gonna come over here. This electron will come over here and they will form a bond to help out that oxygen. Now that oxygen has two, four, six, eight, and it is good. Now let's just check the inner atom, sulfur, which has two, four, six, eight, ten electrons. Is that okay? Sulfur is over here. It's below period two. It's actually in period three, so it could have more than eight. So sulfur can have an expanded octet. So that is good. We just have to show that it has a charge. You bracket that, put a two minus, and that is done. And now we're moving on to D. H-O-N-O. Ho -O. Oh, no. <laughs> so in this case, it looks like it's written out the way that it should be uh, written out as far as the blueprint. H will be bound to O, which will then be bound to nitrogen, which will then be bound to an oxygen. So in this case, I have h o n and O, oh, hydrogen has one valence electron, oxygen has six, and nitrogen has five. So I'll put those respective dots around those elements. So the hydrogen has one, each oxygen has six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the nitrogen has five. So one, two, three, four, five. Single bond everyone first. So electron to electron, that's one bond. Single bond here and a single bond here. And now let's just see if everybody's okay. This hydrogen is okay because hydrogen only wants to have two electrons. Hydrogen has a max of two. So that's good. Let's check this oxygen. Two, four, six, eight. So that has the octet, so that's good. I'll put a check here just telling me that I can't change anything about this. I can't change the lone pairs and I can't change the two bonds. Now moving on, nitrogen has two, four, six, seven. So hmm, that could get a little work on, right? That could be worked on. And then oxygen has two, four, six, seven. Hmm. Oh, but look, there's two electrons, one here, one here. That can be a pair. So I can bring this one electron over and now I can form that nice double bond between them. And now this nitrogen will have two, four, six, eight electrons. That's the octet. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight. So everybody is happy. There's no charge, so you don't need to bracket anything. And that is it. Box this answer off. That's, that's it for this one. D is good. 43 is good. We are done. So guys, if you can do these, pretty much you are set for Lewis structures. There's still more examples to come. So... Practice makes perfect, so you can just keep on practicing along. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Click the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. It helps grow the community. Tell all your classmates and your friends. That would be kind of cool, and I appreciate that. Thank you so much for the support. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. Keep studying hard. See you in the next question.